Let's take a minute and see how the calculations were done for this problem. Notice that somebody's making a claim that the proportion of men who own cats is smaller than the proportion of women who own cats. So that's a claim. That's going to be a hypothesis. In fact, that's going to be the alternative hypothesis. In this problem, we're going to be looking at how to handle uh, a hypothesis test for two proportions. Hypothesis testing in general follows this pattern. Someone makes a claim. Usually it's the alternative hypothesis. In our case, we're saying that that the proportion of the men who uh, own cats minus the proportion of the women who own cats is going to be less than zero. That is, the proportion of the men is less than the proportion of the women. So there's, there's something that we're measuring. I'm just going to call it x for right now. In our problem, it happens to be the difference of two proportions. In our case, x was the difference of the proportion of the men minus the proportion of the women uh, in the population. And uh, the alternative hypothesis is the claim that the proportion of the men is less than the proportion of the women, so that difference is going to be less than zero. So the alternative hypothesis is saying that x is going to be greater than or equal to zero. The alternative hypothesis is always written as x is equal to zero. So to test the hypothesis, we do the following thing. we think about all the possible samples that could be made of a particular size. We calculate the point estimate for this x value for each of those samples. So what I probably should have said earlier is that this is going to be the x bar, the, the all the different possible samples uh, that could be produced and the test and the and the sample statistic that comes from those samples. And what we're claiming is that the population value is really equal to whatever the null hypothesis says. In our case, that is going to be a, a zero. Um, now, the things that could be measured here are lots of different kinds of things. We might really be looking at, at uh, different means, averages, we might be looking at proportions. In our case, in this problem, we're looking at the difference of two proportions. So that's what this x is, is measuring, and we're looking at all the different possible samples. We take one, one particular uh, sample, and we get the, the values that are there. And uh, so that's going to be, that's going to be one sample, uh, point estimate for what this is. We then ask the question, what's the probability that we could get that or in the same direction as the alternative hypothesis is suggesting? So we're really interested in knowing what the area is of, of this to the left of this. If that probability, that area, is low, then we'll need to reject the null hypothesis. It's, it's unlikely that that null hypothesis occurred. If that null hypothesis, if that uh, area is high, then the null hypothesis, then the null hypothesis flies. So those are the. If the null hypothesis is low. If the probability is low, then the null hypothesis must go. If the probability is high then the null hypothesis flies. To find that probability, we'll take this particular score and change it to a z-score or a t-score depending on the situation that we're working in. So we'll find that, that z-value and then we'll use some technology to help us find the area to the left so to find this z value, 
we just need to convert this score here, our test statistic, our, uh, our, our point estimate to a z value. That's done in the following way. We look at z is equal to, so this is a standard idea in finding a z value. We'll look at the point estimate that we've got minus the, the middle point of the, uh, because of the null hypothesis, whatever that is. In that case, it's going to be the x value of associated with the null hypothesis. In our case, this is going to be 0 divided by the standard deviation of this uh, distribution. Now often we don't know what that standard deviation is of that distribution, so we have to approximate this by using the standard error up here, or the, the sample standard deviation, the, the standard deviation that we can approximate because of the sample that we've taken. So that's the general overview of hypothesis testing. So let's uh, let's make all of that work for for us right now. One of the tricks is that you've got to find out how to calculate this uh, this standard deviation or else this uh, uh, standard error. So let's bring uh, our studio in here so we can do some calculations quick and easy. The number of men is 120. They've already calculated the proportion of men of those 120 who uh, have cats to be 10, 10 percent. The number of women sampled was 80 and the proportion of the women who owned cats was 15 percent. I'm making a comment in my script here that the alternative hypothesis is that P, uh, hang on, is that the proportion of the men uh, minus the proportion of the women is less than zero. That's really saying that the proportion of the men who own cats is less than the proportion of the women who own cats. A lot of times people use P1 and, and P2 here instead of, of identifying men and women. But the null hypothesis then is that that difference is equal to zero. So our point estimate is going to be, we'll call it PD for the difference. Uh, PD is going to be uh, the proportion of the men minus the proportion of the women. That's going to be our point estimate for all of this. Now we need to come up with some way of finding this standard deviation, which we can't, but we can, <clears throat> can find this standard error. So we, we look up in the textbook and find out in this particular situation how that standard error is found. So I'm just flashing part of a page from Catherine Kozak's book. Um, where that's explained. You'll need to look that up somewhere though. The textbook says that to find that uh, standard error, we need to find the pooled proportion. So we need to take the total number of, uh, of men who had cats, the total number of women who had cats. Now notice that if you took the proportion of the men who had cats times the number of men who were polled, that's going to be the number of men who had cats. And this is the number of women who had cats. And divide that by the total number of, of uh, individuals involved. So that's the pooled proportion. So of course if the pooled proportion p bar, then q bar would be 1 minus p bar. Oops, for emphasis I wasn't supposed to show you the rest of that script until uh, after you had seen that, the p bar, the q bar is 1 minus p bar. Now the thing that we needed to do is find that standard error, and that's what we found in the textbook, is that it's going to be the square root of the p bar times the q bar divided by the number of men that are involved, then the p bar minus the q bar divided by the number of women that are involved, and it's going to be the adding those two up and taking the square root. So now it's going to be possible for us to find this z value. It's going to be uh, that point estimate that we've got minus the value that the null hypothesis says is the center and divided by that uh, standard error. So the z value is going to be the PD, which was our point estimate, remember,
uh, for all that, minus zero, because that's what the null hypothesis is saying that center is, uh, divided by uh, the standard error that we calculated. And that is what's called the test statistic. So it's just a matter of, of running that script now, and the test statistic is is uh, that amount, and they wanted it rounded to two decimal places. So therefore, there's how you do the, the result.